Imam Muslim Family Center Women's Program. Imam Muslim Family Center Women's Program. We're going to discuss uh, some of the things, some of the remedies, uh, and some issues that need to, you know, need to be addressed that are concerning our community. Uh, so we're going to start Abu Sajid, which is Abu Malo Khair. He's going to uh, start off. Bismillah. Okay, some of the programs that we want to uh, introduce and remind, remind you, not all of these programs will be held at the center. Not, it doesn't necessitate that every program that we mention will be held directly in the building where we'll be praying and having Jumar and classes like that. But what it is, we want to have at least, we want to have a connection to these programs that we're talking about. So, meaning, if we mention a program and it's not, it's not, it doesn't necessitate that that program will be held at the actual message. So first what I'm talking about, for example, this one could be held at the message, sisters classes. I'm talking about specific classes with dealing with specific issues for women. Specific classes dealing with specific issues for women, whatever those issues may be. Because when it comes to learning the religion, there's no shyness when it comes to learning. We can't have the mentality that that's a stupid question. There is no stupid question. You learn, you gotta ask questions. In order to learn, you gotta ask questions. So we wanna have sisters' classes specifically for the women. Whether that teacher, Hopefully, inshallah, we can have some women teachers helping out, some sisters that can teach the sisters. That's even better. Um, also, for an example, tutoring programs in the surrounding area. Tutoring programs for our children. If our children need tutoring, that we connect. It doesn't mean that there will be tutoring in the masjid. But we may know programs close to the master. We have a connection with programs in the surrounding area, in the neighborhood, that are in contact with the Imam Muslim Family Center, where we can send our children directly to those programs. And we can set that up, you know, according to how we want it. If we need be, we have boys, we say, okay, we prefer that we have male teachers for our boys, we prefer we have, however you want to set it up. But it doesn't necessitate that we'll be tutoring children in the masjid. But what we want to do is have a connection to that so that we're able to facilitate uh, tutor programs for our children in case they're in need of it. Uh, next, after school programs. And this could be in the masjid. This could be at the actual center. Where we want to try to increase hours per week for our children in their Islamic learning. We have to be more, we have to do more than one hour on the weekend for Islamic studies for our children. It doesn't make, and this is, this is not a shock, it's not the, this is the reality. The reality is, when it comes to sports, huh? when it comes to sports, the parents, we don't have any issues going to practice three, four times a week, two hours per day, no problem, right? Practice is for two hours, going back and forth to practice, add another hour on, game on the weekend, another three, three hours, three, four hours, no problem. But when it comes to sitting and learning, Islamic adab, how the children should behave, so the children memorize the Quran, learning basic Arabic, learning how to pray, learning how to make wudu, huh? They can't sit for two hours, you wanna do one hour on the weekend, we gotta give them more, we have to set our kids up with more opportunity to be better Islamically. The same way we want the best education for our kids as far as choosing the school they go to, we should want better for our children Islamically. There's no reason, there's no reason, sisters, that our children should not be memorizing the Qur'an at the young ages that many of them are at. And a lot of times, I understand, a lot of times if you haven't seen it done, it might be hard to imagine 
But those kids between the ages of 5 to 12, even 5 to 15, it doesn't take long to memorize the Book of Allah. It doesn't take long. It takes consistency, and it takes a community effort, and definitely it takes uh, help from the parents in the house. It takes, it's a household effort. So we want to have some after-school programs. Now, mind you, all of these programs are not set in stone. These are some of the things that we came up with that we thought would be beneficial. At the end of this, we need suggestions from you all also. This is not like stuff that's etched in stone. These are suggestions that we have, and if you have suggestions, you need to also bring your suggestions forward. Um, also, and this could be for men and women, we want to try to get in contact and have substance abuse program. People might have drug problems. People might have problems with drugs. Sisters might have problems with drugs. The husband might have a problem with drugs. Doesn't mean we're going to be doing drug counseling at the message at the center. No, it doesn't mean that. What it means is you can come to the master, you can come to the center, discuss the issue, and we can connect people with a drug program, if needed, that will be working with IMFC, that will work with the, uh, the message. Uh, next, and we kind of mentioned this, but weekend Islamic studies program. We can do more, and, and, and you gotta, you gotta, we have to, we have to change our mentality. We gotta change our mentality. One hour on the weekend, two hours on the weekend is not enough. But at least we need to have it. That's at the least. At the least we need to have weekend Islamic studies. At the least. And that, that leads to other things. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can't do other things at the Islamic class. Okay? It could be days where we just come, we just benefit, or we just spend time with the kids. Could be days we're supposed to have Islamic studies, but we might go do something fun. But we have to build, we have to build something for our children. And at the least, a weekend program, at the least a weekend program for boys and girls. And for boys and girls, at the least, an Islamic program should be in place. So these are just some of the programs that we want to institute. Uh, again, these are not etched in stone. These do, it doesn't mean that these programs, upon opening the building, will initially be in place right off the bat. It doesn't mean that either. But these are some of the ideas that we came up with that we want to at least try to implement. And Ali is going to discuss some of the rest of them, and then Naeem is going to give some details about uh, the building situation and obtaining the actual building. Bismillah ar from the back. So the first thing Brother Saeed mentioned, uh, he mentioned a lot. And we're going to add to that, inshallah, ta'ala. The first thing is uh, teen mentoring, boys and girls. We need to have, well, we're going to have, inshallah, teen uh, mentoring. So, for example, with the young boys from age 3 to, you know, 18 or 19, we're trying to get mentors for them. And likewise, for the young women. For the young women, the same ages, in their teens. And, you know, just to uh, kind of see what they're going through uh, and with, while they're in school, what's going to help them, what are their goals and aspirations in life. So for example, if we have a young sister who wants to become a doctor, we, we should have enough connections in our community to link her to a doctor. Maybe she's 13 and she wants to be a doctor, so we start young. Okay, so, so let's get you a Muslim doctor, a woman doctor that can mentor you along the way. And same thing, whatever else uh, skills that people have as children or their aspirations, we need to be able to help our children reach those goals. Uh, this is how communities grow. So for example, in other communities, they have free clinics. Some of them are sagging, they have free clinics. We need to be able to have our own free clinics with our own people sponsoring it and putting it together. Some people may say, oh, this is impossible, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Uh, the next issue, and this is a serious issue, the issue of marriage contracts and divorce. Uh, since I've been back, since Abu Sayyid has been back, the issue of marriage and divorce and the, the cloudiness around it, um, those issues need to be dealt with. Um, another issue about the Walis. There's a big, big, big issue here in this city where people believe that if a person is your Wali or your Wakil, then this is like a family member. They can just pop up at your house, hang out, eat dinner. This is Bato. 
and whoever initiated this practice, and this is what happens when no one is educated, when, when people are not educating pro being educated properly. This is bottom. There's no affiliate. If you have, in other words, if this Wali or Wakil is your father, huh? Your son, your brother, your uncle to the end of it, that's something different. But if this person is a, this Wali is a non-male relative and he's hanging out at your house and he's, you know, he's hanging out at your house and so on and so forth, this is not permissible. This is not permissible. Uh, and also the issue of sisters getting married and when they get married, the Wali is the brother's homie. This, this is not gonna work. These are games. This is what you call games. The purpose of a Wali is to protect the rights of the sister not to protect the rights of the brother. And this is why, in Al-Islam, Jannah for a woman is at the feet of her husband. So what a wali has to understand is you're giving away your daughter, your mother, your sister to a man that her paradise is at his feet. If this man is not worthy of that, you put that man in authority or in position over one of your family members that may cause her to go to the hellfire because she can't listen to him and she's this and they're both going back and forth. This is a problem. This issue here needs to be streamlined. And so our plan is to develop a committee of older brothers, of older brothers, that's gonna be dealing with the issues of the women. And with regards to Abu Sajid and myself, if there are issues, then we can deal with it Islamically. Um, there are also issues with women uh, requesting kula and brothers tell them, well, uh, they give them the hadith, you won't smell the fragrance of paradise. You won't smell the fragrance of paradise if you ask for a khul'an bila sabah. Or bila, as it says in Arabic, bila bets. And so some women, they feel trapped and oppressed because they want out or their situation is grim and bleak. And they believe that if they ask for out, then they're going to be in a hellfire. We had such a, I'm running away from it. And so this is what it is. The reality of it is, open this up. The reality of it is, what do we say about the hadith of the woman? She came to the Prophet والسلام, and she said about her husband, she doesn't find anything wrong with his deen. Nothing wrong with his khuluq. The only thing about him is that she didn't like the way he looked. She had a problem with him. And so she feared kufr. And so some of the that they explain that to say this kufr here means that a couple things. It can mean that she wanted the husband to fear that she was going to leave the religion or she feared that she wouldn't be able to fulfill the rights of that husband. So therefore, in that case, the prophet, and so he gave her a guard. So the Prophet ﷺ told the man that, are you going to, or told the woman, are you going to return back the garden or that he gave you for your mahr? And he said yes, and so she returned it, and so he granted her a khul'ah, and this had nothing to do with his deen. It was all about her feelings towards him. And the reason why this issue has to be mentioned is because our religion, this, these types of situations can push people away from the religion. This type of situation can make a woman say, you know what, I'm not practicing Islam because I don't want to be in that situation and he's telling me I can't go to paradise if I don't listen to him and I don't want to be married to him. So now I'm stuck. La. La. And Islam makes, a way, Islam makes a way out for everyone. And there's no oppression in the religion. There's no oppression for anyone. The next issue, go back to me. So I didn't finish your list. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. So the next issue, uh, so we have the marital issues, the issue of Wali's uh, domestic violence. Domestic violence. Some women in our communities are abused, physically, beat down. And they come to the masjid, and they look for assistance. And sometimes, depending on who the beater is, if it's my man, I'm not gonna say nothing. But if I don't like him, then I'm gonna put him out there. No, we don't do that. We, we don't have preferential treatment. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's gonna be your excuse? This woman came to you, beat down. She didn't wanna call the cops. At first she wanted to come to the, to the center for some aid and assistance. And the brothers turned their back on her. So she went to the police, and after she went to the police, oh, the sisters, she's putting the Muslims out there, she's spreading the business out of them. Oh yeah, what is she supposed to do? What is she supposed to do? Islam doesn't stand for any of that. 
and with regards to job placement. And with regards to that issue right there, we're gonna have committees together. Our goal is to have committees together to deal with people or situations of domestic violence. Domestic, all, everything is gonna be dealt with because it's our obligation to deal with it. No one can run away from it. The next issue, job placement. And there are other issues we hear about. Brother, brothers taking advantage of sisters because they're in bad financial situations, so they try to take advantage of them. Why you had to be huh? Yeah, I wouldn't be lying. We should have them in a thing. This stuff is not from the religion. Some stuff that we hear, we, we have, we're surprised that these people are Muslim. You pray? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna salata tanha anal fahshai wa munkari wa al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the salah, it protects the person from fawahish, from evil and disobedient acts. But we find these brothers, some of these brothers, some of these sisters, they might pray five times a day, but they're some of the most wicked of the people. So then you know what? That means something, either A, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran, that the salat protects us from these acts. Yet we find people still falling into those acts, and they may pray five times a day. So then there's an issue here. Do we say, billah, that the ayah in the Quran is not correct? Because we find these people still doing these crazy acts? Or do we say that it's something, if there's something wrong, there's something wrong with the salat of these people? Perhaps they don't even know how to make wudu properly. Perhaps they don't even know how to pray, but they're going through the motions. Perhaps they haven't taken the time to learn properly. Because we're not going to say, the speech of Allah will hop. The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. And so if we find people still doing these things, and they appear to be praying, then know for a surety something is wrong with their salat. Something is wrong with their salat. And lastly, uh, one of the issues is job placement. Uh, we have a lot of brothers that are in prison and sisters that are in prison. Um, and so our goal is to create some form of re-entry program for them so that they can so somehow figure out a way to sustain themselves. To sustain themselves. Which is up from a little kind of. We're going to read uh, some of these questions. Naeem is going to um, discuss Naeem is going to discuss some of the issues with the actual building. The actual building and the actual location of the building and some of the uh, issues connected to attaining the actual building.
anyone, any sisters out there, like we have the pledge forms out there. If you want to make any pledges or donations today, the sister will be out there to actually collect any funds. And we also have, like I said earlier, a swipe machine in case anyone wanted to use their credit card. I noticed that a lot of times, just a, just a little reminder, we go out to eat in a lot of expensive restaurants, some not expensive, but we always leave a tip for the waiter or the waitress, but we forget about the massages. So, giving Sadaka to the, to the massages, we can also give Sadaka for this building that we're trying to attain. And if any sisters out there have any ideals on fundraising, we need help with the ideals on fundraising. We need help on our fundraising committee. So even on the pledges, if you can even offer some time, even if it's not money, that will really be appreciated. So we're gonna answer some um, some of the questions that the sisters already put in. But if y'all have any questions about the building, you can also write them down. Uh, it says, Salaam Alaikum, is there a PayPal account? Yes, Iman Muslim Family Center has a PayPal account. There's a Cash App account. There's a PayPal Me account. There's also an address if you wanna mail in your donations. Um, as much information as you can put on the slip, on the pledge form, uh, the better. This question says, how does a single parent stay consistent with studying in the home with her children? I am often very tired after working, doing homework with the children, and then cooking and cleaning, then trying to prepare for the next day. Number one, I would say to make du'a that Allah, Jalla wa'ala, uh, reward you for your work. And to ask Allah to make a, a way for you to be able to study more. Ask Allah to make your days, ask Allah to make your days beneficial, to make them spacious. Learn the du'a that the Prophet used to say after Salat al-Fajr. Uh, about getting beneficial knowledge every day and to try to benefit from your time. Sometimes we waste time on things that are really of no benefit. We have to be stingy with our time because the one thing we don't get back is time. So sometimes we gotta be stingy with our time, which means you may not be able to speak to people every single day, which means you might have to cut you know, some conversations a little short you might not be on the internet as long. Uh, I would just say try to use your time to the best of your ability benefiting outside of when you're doing the actual thing that you have to do. And number one, to make dua. Make dua that Allah Jalla wa'ala makes it easy for you to open up a way to be able to study more and learn more. What services will there be for the youth, male and females? Will you partner with a therapist to assist with? the mental health issues the community suffers from. Gee, that's a good idea that we didn't mention. And this is the type of thing we need. We need ideas where, like this one, a therapist to assist with mental health issues. And this is what we want to add to the list, that hopefully we can have this connection, a connection with a therapist or an office where we can deal with, or our children, if it is our children, or either the parents with mental health issues. Gee, we're going to add that to the list of programs, inshallah. Uh, the services for the children, and this came in another question, outside of the classes in the masjid, uh, we wanna try to do, and let me say this now, we don't have all the answers. We gave you some suggestions. If you have suggestions, we want you to present your suggestions also. Um, 
we spoke about a little while ago, even developing our own basketball league. We want to develop our own Muslim basketball league. And it doesn't mean that non-Muslims can't play in the, in the league, but what it means is that we're in control of the atmosphere. We control the atmosphere. I mean, I've been in some areas and some games and stuff like that when our women are out there, uh, and you know, it's not really a place for our women to be. But for one reason or another, they have to go there, they're taking the, the kids there to the game, the boys to the games. So our women are like in, in the atmosphere that's really, is not appropriate for them to be in, but it really, you know, there's no limits when you're out there. But if we have our own atmosphere, we control our own atmosphere, it can be a little more comfortable for our children. So we want to try to have after school programs, uh, weekend programs, hopefully we can get involved with. Huh? game night and traveling, maybe outdoor programs, visiting different uh, museums, stuff like that. We need, we also need suggestions from you sisters. I know y'all got a lot of ideas and stuff. We don't have all the answers. That's why it's an open discussion where y'all can present the things that you, the ideas you have. Will there be Quran classes for sisters? Inshallah. We have to, we need Quran classes for sisters. This is like a necessity. This is like, yeah, we, it's like, we have sisters who can teach Quran, but they can't teach people who don't, you know, people don't show up to class. We have to all of us. There's women there now that can teach Quran, over there with you, sitting with you in the room. But, number one, we have to have a place to do it. Number two, our mentality has to change. The Quran has to be important in our lives. So, inshallah, yes, there will be Quran programs. Uh, where is the center located? The proposed location at this point is in West Philadelphia on Lancaster Avenue. As Naeem said, for now, as he said, the building has not been uh, obtained yet. That is the proposed location. We still need $4,000 to obtain the building. Please advise us on how to do family business with being attacked because they're trying to lose their guns and they have to get out Please advise us of how to deal with our family and business being attacked because we are choosing to listen to you brothers and aiding the building the masjid. If you're ultimately being attacked for help aid building a masjid, then you gotta look at why was someone attacking for help aid building the masjid, number one. Number two, and we, I think we all know this, this is a city filled with this is hate. You know, there's a lot of hate going on. And there's a lot of ignorance going on. And it's a lot of talking, it's a lot of criticism. Honestly, the most important thing that I would say is you have to learn the fundamentals first. You can't defend yourself against what anybody says if you don't know the fundamentals, the basics. Basic is, man, learn the fundamentals. If you learn the fundamentals, you'll know and it'll be easy to spot when someone is going against the fundamentals. Learn the basics. One thing's for sure, two things are certain. The talking is not going to stop. The attacks are not going to stop. Brothers are being, being attacked for years. Ten years going on, same people being attacked. Like, that's not going to stop. So if you're actually worried about people attacking you, that's going to continue. Certain people, that's what they do. They attack, they attack people. That's what they've been doing, and that's what they're going to continue to do. But at some point, you got to block people out. At some point, you have to block people out and do what you do, seeking a law's reward. And people are going to criticize People are going to criticize, regardless. They're going to be criticism. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was criticized by his own people. He was ran out of his own city. Early man, the past scholars of Islam, they were attacked by their own people, criticized. People way better than us, me and you, have been criticized. Eventually, at some point, you have to draw a line and do what you do, seeking the law's reward. Let's say something. Mano's best. I want to address that, that question that the sister asked about uh, her family. Please advise us how to deal with our family and business being attacked because we are choosing to listen to you brothers and aiding the building, building the masjid. Uh, sister, first of all, may Allah bless you and your husband and reward you and pardon any of your shortcomings at me. Number one, when it comes to an issue like that, you have to look at what's most important to you in your life right now. So for example, if you supporting us and coming to listen to us, if it's gonna cause you problems in your livelihood and your business, then fall back. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in your heart. You don't have to stand up and say, you know what, I gotta stand up and show that I'm, I'm able to stand on my own. You're not required to do that. You're required to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Everyone does not have the ability to stand up against people, and it's okay. Nobody's asking people, hey, stand up and take a stand. No. As long as you know, even in Islam, it's permissible for a person to say an utter statement of kufr in the, in, the, in, the, in the sight of the enemy. It's permissible in that case. So I'm not saying that this is the situation, but you know your situation. If it's going to cause you to lose your business, if it's going to cause you to go to poverty, and stuff, it's not, just take your time and fall back. And maybe a lot, and out of patience, just like during the time when the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, when Islam first came, and the Sahaba, they stood in hiding, and they, and they hid, and they, and they went to Daru Arqa, and they practiced Islam uh, in silence or in secret. And I know I'm saying, I'm not saying this to that level, but it obviously it's important because you wrote it down and you say it's affecting your business. If it's affecting your business, fall back. Fall back. We don't want a brother and their wife to be in poverty because you want to listen to certain brothers. You don't have to listen to us. Listen to somebody else. It's not that serious. Yeah, this class is online. You can, you know, it's not that serious to take, to take a stand. Protect yourself and your family. It's not that serious. <coughs> Inshallah ta'ala, there will come a time when you can say, okay, yes, if, I, if you believe that what these brothers or what we're saying is the truth, then there will come a time, inshallah, that you can say, okay, yeah, I, I support that. And it's not going to affect you and your business. But if, if it's going to affect you and your business today, it's going to cause you harm, it's not that serious. Fall back, take care of your responsibilities with your family, and leave it alone. And take care of fear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, right, the next question. What does fornicate mean? Fornicate is illegal sexual intercourse. What is illegal sexual intercourse? If a man is having sexual intercourse with a woman and he is not married to that woman, or she is not married to that man, this is fornication. This is the meaning of fornication. Right. The next question. Is it permissible to pray extra prayers after fajr? It is not legislated to pray any extra prayers after fajr. It depends on what you mean by it. You mean salat al duha or do you just mean just immediately after the fajr prayer there's no extra prayers there now if a person is asking this question because they miss the sunnah before fajr prayer then in this case uh, some of the ulama say that you should wait until the sun comes up to pray those sunnah for fajr and some of them say you can pray it immediately once uh, you finish praying salat al fajr and Allah knows best Allah ta'ala a'lam the next question, assalamu alaikum, on Ali's class, he mentioned about making up miss salat when misses start. So if you miss duhur due to misses, then when it stops, if it is stopped during duhur, do you pray duhur twice? But, this I don't understand the question, but this is what I will say. If, if salat al duhur comes in, and when Salat al comes in, and your menses is not on, and then while Salat al is in, your menses comes on, you then have to make that Salat up once your menses is off. You have to make up that Salat al once your menses is off. So a person might ask, why do I have to make it up if my menses came on? This is because when Salat al first came in, it was wajib upon you to pray it. As soon as Salat al came in, it was wajib upon you to pray it. Then ja'at adidun. Then something came to uh, prevent you from praying. Once that man here, once that thing that came to prevent you from praying is removed, meaning your menses, then now the Salat is incumbent upon you to make it up. But the next question. The next question is, we must identify the sisters in our community with skills to build and enrich our community, creating successful business ventures for the sisters and our youth so that this may create income within our community, so not to depend on outside sources in the community such as childcare, healthcare, culinary, seamstress, babysitting services, and the youth. Yes, I agree with this wholeheartedly. And this is something that women could work towards, and this is something that we all should work towards and encourage. We should all work towards uh, something like that and encourage it. Like, the next one. 
Can you explain the idda for a widow after Islam? Keep a widow after Islam. A widow after Islam? Can you explain the idda for, for a widow after Islam? What is that? But, al muhim will we'll explain the issue of the idda. If a woman, so if a woman's husband passes away, there are two types of idda for a woman whose husband passes away. It depends on the condition of the woman. Number one, if that sister is pregnant, if she's pregnant and her husband passes away, her idda is still until she drops, as they mentioned, until she has the baby. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأُولَاتُ الْأَحْمَالِ أَجْلَهُنَّ أَنْ يَضَعْنَ حَمْدَهُنَّ That the, the myth or that the idda period for a woman is when she drops her lube, meaning until, until she has the baby. Now, if the woman, uh, if the woman does, is not pregnant, if she is not pregnant, then her husband passes away, then her idda period is four months and ten days. As Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُتُوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ يَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجٍ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرْ أَرْبَعَةِ أَشْهُرْ وَعَشْرَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the, when the husbands of these women, they pass away, their husbands die, then they should refrain or remain to themselves for four months and ten days. Four months and ten days. So then, there are two different uh, rulings with regards to a woman if her husband passes away. Number one, she is either pregnant, or number two, she is not pregnant. If she is pregnant, then her the period... Uh, if she is pregnant, then her idda period is until she has the child. Uh, and if she is not pregnant, then her idda period is four months. It didn't say four menstrual cycles. Four months and ten days. Four months and ten days. Uh, the next question here, can a person call a woman mother who raised them, but is their mother's sister? Yani need their aunt. Who raised them from six months, or is it haram? Is it haram? Tayyip. What I can say in Allah Ta'ala Adam, it may be la young buggy, it might not be appropriate, it might not be appropriate, but to say it's haram is something difficult as I do, I do not know the answer to that. Perhaps we can uh, ask some of the Rulema about that in particular, about actually calling your mom, even though she is not your mom. The origin or the asl, the origin, the rule of thumb is that you shouldn't. Or whether it is haram, meaning that if a person does that, are they deserving of Allah's punishment? Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Now, no, okay. uh, we're going to stop now, inshallah ta'ala. Hopefully everyone filled out the pledge forms. Uh, we want to make a quick note. The point of the fundraising that we're doing now, if there are any more questions, you can send them over. But ultimately, what we want to do is establish a business or businesses to fund the center, to fund Imam Muslim Family Center. We ultimately want to establish businesses to fund the center so that we don't have to keep fundraising amongst ourselves. So we don't have to keep putting money up. We want to ultimately get a business separate outside of the center that will support Imam Muslim Family Center by itself, that business or businesses. Therefore, we won't have to keep Fundraising, we don't have to keep taking pledges from the people every every month. We don't want to really stay in this condition too long. This is initially we're trying to get it, get it up off the ground, but we actually want to get a business, start a, a business for the masjid in support of the masjid itself, so that we can relieve the burden from the rest of the people. Also, with that business, we're able to hire people from our own community to work in that business, whatever it may be, which will be a benefit as far as a form of job placement. And along those best, if there are any more questions, you can send them over. If not, we'll stop now and wait for more suggestions, inshallah, time.